Hi, I'm Alan Ning. I'm with my friend Annalisa Reynoso. Uh, we are talking about Encanto. Um, yeah, just just real brief. Uh, I know Annalisa from my improv troupe in San Diego. Um, but one, one thing I've learned about you is you are a huge Disney nerd, Disney geek. Yeah, it's very apparent from my background and stuff. <laughs> I, I love Disney quite a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how we bonded. That in musical theater. And so that's why I thought you were the perfect, uh, the perfect person to talk about Encanto, um, just coming out on uh, in theaters. So uh, yeah, first of all, the thing that struck me is you. Okay, so one thing about Annalisa, she is a she is a blue check TikToker. And, <laughs> uh, so so there you go. There's there's your street cred, and um, you posted a video about how much you look like uh, Mirabelle. Uh, yeah <laughs> so so talk about it. when did you first find I, first of all uh i think the the issue here is why did disney steal your likeness yeah i the cease and desist will be arriving soon mr chapek but um i i got like uh it was like a normal morning and then i woke up my phone was blowing up and i'm like oh god what's happening and everyone had sent me this initial screenshot that went up and i was like oh i I guess she kind of looks like me. I don't really know what this film's about, but you know, we're both quirky Hispanic women with glasses and short curly brown <laughs> hair. And it was kind of cool. I've, I've never had a Disney character that looks like me. So I, I was really stoked. Yeah. So there's, there's you here. Let's see if we can, uh... <laughs> no, I need to, I need to throw you up here. How do I, <laughs> why is that me? Um, I was trying to do a shot for shot, but I... there you go. Hey, the, the, um, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like, oh wow, she's right. She does look a lot like you. They they saw you at Disneyland, and then just stole stole your picture. Yeah, they went that girl, take it, go right that. Down. <laughs> I know. So yeah, evil corporation, the mouse. Okay, so yeah, let's let's just get into it. Um, yeah. So what are your general feelings about Encanto? I really loved it. Um, I was kind of worried that they were going to. Oh God, they were going to do this thing that they tend to do with a lot of movies where they take the like main protagonist and turn them into like an animal or something <laughs> for like half of the movie and then they're not a human. And they didn't do that for this one, which I thought was great. I don't know why my hair is doing that. There you go. Yeah, the, the other thing they didn't do is they didn't kill off one of her parents. Yeah. Uh, one or both of her parents. There's a dead there, grandfather. There was, there was a dead person, but like it's a Disney <laughs> movie, it's going to happen. Yeah, you have to have death to kind of propel a story. And exactly. um, and then I, I think, you know, it's kind of like, this is the issue I had with Mulan. Or the, the debates we have with Mulan is, you know, is she a princess? And and uh, is Mirabelle a princess? And, you know, I think technically, no. she Neither have come from a, a royal no. lineage at all. And none of them ever become king or queen of their realm. Right. I think she's a big deal in her, like, little vicinity. Like she's treated mm -hmm. as such, but nah. But I hope she like in the Disney parks they put her alongside like Cinderella and Ariel and stuff like that. Yeah, because I'm very biased, but I think she's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of like uh, so. This is a weird year because of COVID. Uh, Raya and the Last Dragon came out in I think it was March, March or May, and um, and so weirdly. These two Disney movies are now competing with each other for for awards. I I had to submit my best animation awards nominations, and I did oh, put geez. both Raya and Encanto. As so you, you know, should. yeah, because usually Disney maybe competes with Pixar, and so we have Luca there. Um, oh, so gosh. now now we've got these three really strong movies battling over, you know, who's oh, going to win the award. And it's clearly that's it's going to really be Raya too. and the Last Dragon. <laughs> yeah, Raya was great. I love that movie. I saw it like I think two weeks ago on mm -hmm. Disney Plus. It was great. Oh uh, yeah, no, I love it. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think what this has going for it is the music. So so let's talk about that. Um, what are some of the things that really struck out to you with Encanto? Um, well, Lin Manuel Miranda hit it out of the park again. Just like right off the bat, that opening song was so good and and I'm a huge fan of Lynn so you could literally hear like some of the lyrics like I could imagine Lynn like singing it in the writer's room or whatnot but 
as I was watching this movie, I was thinking this would be a really great movie to stage adaptation. Like mm. a lot of the songs, the way they were structured, there was a lot of like rounds and thematic things being carried along the whole thing. Like I could easily see this being taken to a Broadway stage. Yeah. You know, if you want to hire me for that, that'd be yeah. great. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, I think um, I, I agree with you. I, I love the music. Um, and if you, when you watch the movie, you will see that the, the songs are actually choreographed as if they were a stage play. I mean, they're, they're backup yeah. dancers who are basically the, the villagers uh, of this town. Yeah. And, um, and the, the, the lighting, it, it, it does feel like uh, it's a stage production more than a typical Disney, uh, Disney musical, so to speak. Yeah, there was a part in the song that Louisa sings about the really strong girl that like the familial pressure is being put on her. And then yeah. there was a break where she's just dancing and singing and like they're <laughs> in, like going around and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Like, I don't really see this often. Like if you were to compare it to like Frozen, they're just singing while doing other mundane tasks. Mm -hmm. But this was like, we are dancing and look yeah. at us dance. <laughs> Now, I will take issue with the first song. Um, it, uh, to me, it uh, it blew by so quickly. Uh, and I'll, I'll say that it's the, the lyrics run rapid, like hip-hop, which is fairly typical of Lin-Manuel Miranda. Um, and so for me, it was very difficult to figure out what he was, what, what the, the song was saying and and then matching it with the characters. I, I describe it this way. When, when I enter a movie... You know, you're in this darkened room and the movie pops on and you're blasted with color. And there's this disorientation that occurs the moment the movie starts. And so you kind of want to ease people into this backstory that you're, you're presenting in the song. And I just found myself really confused and really trying to figure out, you know, like they would they introduced, um, I think, the aunt who controls weather. Um, yeah. that, that just moves quickly. And, and OK, someone knows weather. And then there's Bruno who who we don't talk about and, we don't talk and about um, <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I just had a hard time just picking that up. But after that first song, uh, you know, it slows down all the songs beyond that are, are really good. Catchy. The, the things I require of a musical, they're, they're catchy. They have snappy lyrics, lyrics you can remember, and then yeah. lyrics that, that serve the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, Personally, I like the intro, but once again, I'm like very biased just because like I think anything that Lynn does is like chef's kiss, but um, <laughs> he could do I no think, wrong. I get it. No. Yeah. But I almost think that like how fast paced it was kind of fed into like the nervousness of the main character, mm -hmm. like because the kids were like interrogating her, like, what's your power? What's your thing? And so she was like trying to push it along like as fast as possible. But you know, maybe subtitles would have helped or like something <laughs> to kind of help. Because when she was like, my Tia Peppa controls the weather and next, I'm like, okay, it, it was kind of a lot right off the bat, but yeah. it was fun. You know, one, one thing I appreciated was, you know, you talk about subtitles, the fact that there weren't any and that people were allowed yeah. to speak Spanish. There's one song in Spanish that um, with no subtitles. And, and I like the fact that you know, even though I don't know what's being said, I can understand the emotion and the ideas behind it. And, um, yeah. it, you know, I, I don't, yeah, actually, you haven't seen West Side Story yet, but it's the same thing. There's, there's an extensive amount of Spanish in there, and there's zero yes. subtitles. As it should be. Yes. <laughs> oh, that yeah. scene, though, with the Spanish song, I was sobbing my eyes out in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> it was so heartbreaking. Because um, I, I speak Spanglish. I was raised in a family that speaks Spanish, but I don't necessarily like know it hundred percent, but there were like keywords that I picked up on that further pushed like the whole backstory with the grandma and like the village being torn up in the candle. But, oh my God. That scene. Yeah. I was like, Whoo! <laughs> yeah. Well, my family were, you know, Chinese. And so when I go to my grandparents' house, a lot of Chinese being spoken and I understand zero of it. And she would watch these uh, Chinese soap operas. And um, oh, gotcha. you know, and the, the greatest thing is you could just watch it and know exactly what's going on. Oh, yeah. I do that with my grandma's telenovelas, 1,000%. Yeah. You just pick up on little things. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. okay, let's talk about the story a bit. Um, 
uh, one thing that that struck me was you know even though this is not your typical princess movie uh, you know just the theme of it um stands out in the sense of mirabelle is the normal person in a family of greats so to speak um you know i, I likened it to king richard where uh where richard williams has serena and venus and they're destined for greatness yet he has three other daughters uh to add to that and we don't yeah. see a lot of them and uh and I, I i like the fact that this is uh you know this is a character that everyone who watches the movie can relate to because she's normal like we're normal and yeah. uh and and this this idea of her having to not accept her normalness but find the greatness of, of being normal yeah i also thought it was really cool um the the entire movie was a giant metaphor for something that is very prevalent in hispanic families and mm -hmm. that is guilt from your grandmother boy <laughs> oh boy it like the whole thing was a giant metaphor on that like uh, because of like you know societal pressures being put on generations after generations they moms and grandmas of Hispanic origin can be very difficult on their offspring and it travels and you know as generations continue it gets less and less and less but I thought this movie took that idea um and handled it beautifully like I left the theater and I was like oh dang you're right my grandma was a little bit hard on my aunt <laughs> and I was like thinking about it I'm like oh, okay I'm like sure <laughs> I yeah. had to reflect a little bit but yeah, I just think it, it, it handled it beautifully, especially paired with that Disney short that was put before it, which was also a bit about parenting, uh, mm -hmm. the one with the raccoons on the beach and stuff like that. Wow, I did. <laughs> this is uh, so. This is this is my world. I I didn't realize there was a short in front of it because I, I just saw a direct a direct screening of the movie, so there's no trailer. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I yeah. need to look that one up. I even wow. I even I, I was even watching it. Um, just before this and um huh. you know i just have the movie itself i don't have what came before oh, it so yeah okay gotcha, yeah there's wow. a disney short about that. like a raccoon that's raising its kid not to like get eaten by a wolf on the beach mm -hmm. and then like stuff happens and then it cuts to like when that kid is a parent and teaching its kid it, like it shows like learning from your parents mistakes essentially so with that opening into the movie it was like oh I yeah. get the theme. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, this is what I appreciate about Disney. It, it's, it's about family. It's always about family. And, you know, you mentioned the, the, uh, the uh, disapproving grandmother. I mean, that's, you know, I, I can't think of a culture that doesn't have that, but true, you know, very true. But, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, I, I think this is one thing. Another thing about uh, Encanto is the fact that, you know, as much as we've seen stories and movies, from um from mexico from central america this feels very much latin it takes place in chile i believe or colombia it takes place yeah. in colombia and so um you know there's a even within this country there's a great deal of diversity that they're showing in there uh with the with various characters and um you know and i i think it just gets to that global message of you know family is family you know and we struggle through the same things you know, we carry down our, our um, you know, our greatness and we carry down our curses from generation to generation. And that, that's definitely happening here. Very true. Well said. All right. So, um, so I will say, though, that any, I'm going to, let's nitpick a few things, or I'm going to nitpick a few things. I love the movie okay. in general. I gave it, <laughs> I believe I gave it eight and a half. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, look. It's Disney, so it's a kids movie. Yeah. So there's your your bar goes down a little bit. It's it, and it's not Beauty and the Beast, so, um, <laughs> you know. And and I mentioned the opening song. Okay, that bothered me. But again, I think any any criticisms I have are very nitpicky. Uh, you know, there's there's that red herring right in the middle of the movie where um, where it's like, oh, how do we break the curse? Oh, you need to go hug your sister. And um, <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> I had to clarify it because my, my, I saw that movie with my mom and she asked about that. She's like, wait, so did that do nothing? And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know. The kid but, freaked out a little bit, but I don't know if that did anything. Well, this is the thing. Okay. Pixar is great at this. Um, you know, 
especially the Toy Story movies. It's like, okay, here's how we solve, the, here's how we save the day. We do this, 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 and this, and boom, everything happens. And as a avid Pixar fan, you know that this, 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 and this isn't going to happen. In fact, no. uh, every single step is going to be thwarted somehow. And and yeah. the way you think you're going to solve the problem is is not the way the problem is solved. And this one, okay, that that's the go hug your sister, and the curse will be <laughs> will be over. And the stakes of that is so low that. I think for anyone who watches it, they know that this is not how the problem is going to be solved. And so now you're yeah. ahead of the film a bit. And now we have to go through a song where Mirabelle tries to hug her sister. <laughs> and you just yeah. realize, well, they're going to hug. the but... absolute worst. That sister is so mean to her. And I don't <laughs> understand why she was that. Like, I get like Mirabelle's a nuisance, but it seems so unjustified a little bit. It's like, why are you so rude? Yeah, what? well, because she's perfect. <laughs> and, uh, and that's her oh, struggle. That's not a perfect. reason. <laughs> I know, which is the other thing is like, I mean, I get it. I want to be empathetic for perfect people and this and the uh and the 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 problem and, and the struggle to remain perfect, but yes, you know, growing up, but like, perfect, but like Louisa hard. wasn't that mean to Mirabelle, and she mm -hmm. had like she had a whole song about how she was like under pressure. Yeah, this flower girl, don't know why she was so mean. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, family, it's uh, yeah. do you have a perfect sibling? No, I'm the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pretend you're your brother. And, uh... <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it was like a good song, and it it, it kind of like led into like why the sister was like that. And then when they hugged, I was like, "Is anything gonna happen?" And then they kind of freaked out a little yeah. bit, and then. But you, you had to know the that when they head. hugged, nothing was gonna be solved. That that because yeah. one, it takes place right in the middle of the movie. Because uh, you know the movie's not over anytime soon, yeah. And uh, and when they finally do it, it's like, well, yeah. I, and th I think my point is, is that <laughs> at, at that moment we're a little too far ahead of the movie, uh, and uh -huh. we, you know, it's kind of like now we have to wait for the events to pass before we can continue on with the real story. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Um, and then let's see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any. Okay. And then. Any other thoughts that you have? Because uh, I, I want to get into the ending real uh, briefly. Yeah, um, I just thought like, oh, one quick thing that I noticed. This is so stupid, but I it made me so happy. I've been watching Disney movies since I was in my mom's womb, essentially. <laughs> but um, there was a shot where it shows Louisa doing like this move. And she yeah. turns around and the camera is like behind her. Uh -huh. And there are baby hairs on her neck. Now you're probably <laughs> thinking, why is that important? It is so important. And there were multiple shots where they would show like the, the female characters, like, and they had baby hairs on their arms and on their neck, because that's a thing that happens. And it's realistic on like Anna and Elsa that are just shaved hairless. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I just, I just thought that detail was so great. And it made me happy. Cause I'm like, I mean, has there normal. been a, has there been another Disney movie that, or even other movie that um, that kind of speaks to that Latin Hispanic uh, heritage, or you know, I don't know if you know. I think Coco, but they never talked about baby hair in Coco. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's true. That's the first time that I saw that in a Disney movie, and it made me happy. Maybe I missed something, but yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to remember what was the last. Yeah, Coco was because. For me, the before Raya, and and Raya is Southeast Asian, but you know, right, you know, but it's still it was still familiar enough to me to 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 love the movie. But yeah, you know, we yeah. had the the original Mulan animated cartoon feature, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're just little things of like, oh yeah, that's that's totally Chinese. That's totally me. Um, yeah. You know, other than eating with chopsticks, uh, <laughs> you know, there's the aya, and um, oh my god. <laughs> You know the ancestors, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, there, there was just little things there that okay, they did their research. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I, I also, I just think that it's really cool, like nowadays, to have, like, I'm thinking what it's like to be like a seven-year-old child right now watching mm. these Disney movies, and like, 
nothing wrong with Ariel and Cinderella and stuff like that. That's what I grew up with, like Ariel and Belle. They're great role models, but like, imagine growing up right now and then you see like uh, Raya who kicks butt and she's like awesome. And then you have Louisa who's super strong and is like, the build's a little bit different. And just, I just think it's so mm -hmm. great that Disney's pushing all these positive role models, like even more so. I, yeah. It just makes my heart happy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm not on this diversity bandwagon of, you know, everything has to be this, or we gotta, you know, we gotta check the boxes. But, but uh, my only thing is if you're going to do it, um, yeah, get it, get it right. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And that, uh, that's kind of. Have that accuracy. And it's yeah. Great. I mean, like the live action Mulan just didn't feel right. I haven't seen the live action. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a whole, that's <laughs> I have a whole other seen, interview. Yeah. It's, I wasn't sure about it. I was like, ah. Now let's, let's I'll talk about one more thing and then we'll get to the ending, but uh, the yeah. superhero aspect of it that, I mean, this is, this is the thing that locks kids into these movies is, is, you know, she comes from essentially a family of superheroes. Um, yeah. Did you yeah. feel that uh, for, for the little boy in me? That's the, uh, you know, that's the thing that I, that really energized me yeah. about this movie. What about you? Um, yeah, it was like Avengers, but totally different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was really cool to see like all these different powers and how they all benefited the town. Like, yeah. I think personally, my favorite out of all of them was, uh, her name was Dolores, someone who could hear really well. Uh -huh. She was hilarious. I love that power. I feel like if I were to have any of the powers that were in the family, I'd be the nosy one. Yes, but then there's great burden that comes with that power. And I think that's True. the one thing that that's the one thing oh. I liked about this movie. And and Louisa kind of brings it up. It's the fact that, yeah, you think these powers are great, which they are. Um, yeah. but there's there's a lot of burden that comes with it for Louisa oh, yeah. caring too much for uh for her cousin, I think, uh, who could hear. Um the, but that dinner hearing, scene. Yeah, it's the fact well, that you she was like her. holding in that secret and then she was passing it down the table. Oh my god, my anxiety <laughs> was out of the freaking roof. Ugh. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, what women want or, or what men want. It's you, you don't want to hear everything, you just really yeah. don't. Yeah, uh, <laughs> okay, so let's get to the ending. Um, slight spoiler in the sense of you know, let's let's face it, um, the ending it's a they lived happily ever and after ending so yeah. this this that really shouldn't be a surprise but if you really don't want to hear it uh <laughs> you know this is annalisa say bye and then we'll go to the ending here uh <laughs> i want to get your thoughts on this but you know at, at near the end everyone loses their powers uh and right. uh you know family comes together the village comes together they rebuild the house and then they get their powers back. And um, and my feeling was that it I think it would have been a much stronger and more interesting story if they didn't get their powers back. That if this is a movie about family and about accepting family and, a, and now you have a village that's kind of a family coming together to help another family. Um, if you ended right there, it, to me, it just felt like that's that seems to be the perfect ending and and bringing their powers back just seemed to kind of you know maybe pull the rug out on that mm -hmm. that's an interesting take because i'm trying to think like how that would look like if it was just they built the house and they're happy and yeah. that, well that. I, well let's let me add this it's the it's the village uh the people living right. in the village that came and helped build the house yeah they all and helped up. restore their lives and, mm -hmm. and uplifted the family as the, the family of that village. Yeah. And to me, that that was like, yeah, that's that's a great ending. And, you know, the family right. together, that's another great right. ending. That is great. I feel as almost though, if it didn't, like if they didn't revert to their powers, I'd be a little bit bummed. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like, I feel like, oh, that sucks. I, like, I get families there, but like. Louisa yeah, I can't hold a piano anymore. I'm bummed. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. well, well, that's the interesting thing is because yeah, you know, the only one who would feel real who wouldn't feel as bad is Mirabelle. Right. Because, She'd be vibing. Know, Nothing has changed. Yeah, and, and I think uh let's let's get philosophical for a moment, but um okay. you know, when you have powers, there's this um 
there's this ease that you have that you can rely on the powers. The the fact that this house can do everything for you, um, will sweep itself, will re, re will do the dishes for you, Smart and now house. the the house is a normal house, and now you have to do it yourself. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, to me, it just seems like that seems like the better ending because now now people have to rely on each other. People have to actually do work to get things right. done. And, you um, have to sweep the floor, Mirabelle. Get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now he has yeah. a Cinderella issue. Oh, God. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Mirabelle, the house isn't going to sweep itself anymore. No. You did this. You have to fix it. <laughs> um, I also think that it was really heartwarming because there was the scene where the grandma was hugging Mirabelle by the river and all those butterflies went by. And I was like, for like a hair of a second, I was like, is Mirabelle's power going to be that she controls butterflies? Because <laughs> there's butterflies all over her shirt. And I was like, this is weird, but okay. But then it was showed that her power, her power at the end was like touching a doorknob and like bringing it all back. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that was her power all along and that this was the only time you were able to see her power or if it that part yeah. i think was the only part where i was a little bit confused on well see i think that's my point is i, th I think we're hung up on the powers it, yeah. i think mirabelle's power was that she didn't have it and that she was sort of the the glue that ultimately holds this family together yeah and and that's her power you know uh, okay sure i'd still love to have super strength but you know <laughs> <laughs> A good family is pretty solid too. Yeah, <laughs> a good family absolutely. dynamic. <laughs> no, I mean, the, to me, the only real reason to bring back the powers at the end was, oh, well, now's a good time for a TV series uh, on Disney Plus or on the Disney Channel. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a TV series Disney if they did that. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I think a TV <laughs> series would work just yeah. because you you have family, so there's a million stories in that, and now you have these powered people uh powered mm -hmm. relatives and then you have mirabelle who is the normal one and you could you could definitely spawn a tv series just based oh, yeah. on that i think that if um like let's say the movie did end like that where like you know the house is normal and everyone has to go back to normal it mm -hmm. would almost infer that like the grandpa's like dead dead yeah because <laughs> yeah. wasn't, wasn't the grandpa like in the candle essentially and like he was his death was the reason for all of this <laughs> I always viewed like the house as like the grandpa, kind of yeah. like in like a weird monster house sort of way. If you've seen that movie uh, where the house is like alive because like a dead person is in it. Yeah, no, I like I to see the grandpa. <laughs> as uh, I like to think of the grandpa as Uncle Ben. Uh, you know, he's he's dead. Oh, gotcha. He's oh, dead. That's no. The whole, Why yeah. would you bring you can't, that up? You can't bring him back to life now. or or, you know. It ruins everything. It ruins the meaning of everyone's existence. So, you know, you yeah. have to keep them dead. Dead oh, is dead. Damn. All right. Yeah. Well, hopefully they would take their powers and, like, be conscious. Be like, don't rely on your powers because they're not always going to be there. Hopefully. If they were to continue this in, like, a, a television series or something like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Final thoughts. Uh, yeah. Give us just a quick recap Encanto. Um, great movie. Wear waterproof mascara. The music <laughs> slaps. Oh. I will be getting. The... Yeah, we haven't talked about the music. Oh my gosh! Uh, okay. The thing that sets this apart from other movies: a, the color. Um, this is probably yeah. the most green movie you're gonna see. It's, and it's so just beautiful. Beautiful green. And then the music. Yeah. Uh, I miss. I miss percussion and I miss brass. And uh, there's a lot of percussion, a lot of brass in this movie. Yeah. Last time I vibed to a Disney movie this hard was Moana, which was also Lin-Manuel Miranda. So, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I I give it a solid eight and a half out of ten. There yeah. you go. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think... You know, any criticism I have is super minor. Uh, definitely eight and a half. I think, you know, I just saw it again. I'd see it again as well. So it, it definitely has that repeat value. And, and now that I understand the opening song, it's much more enjoyable. There you go. All right. So, hey, um, yeah, Annalisa, thank you for doing this. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. What are your, how do people find you? 
What are your handles? At Adventure Annalisa on all social media platforms except for Twitter. I don't have Twitter. <laughs> all right, very good. Uh, yeah, thanks for doing this. Uh, be sure, hey, yeah, what did you think of Encanto? Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, subscribe, subscribe to everything Annalisa is a part of. And uh, with that, let's get out of here. Thank you.